guys welcome back to my youtube channel it has been a minute again since i've posted and i apologize but as you can tell baby girl is here before we get into the video i would like all of you to formally meet eloise all right say hi she was born november 27th weighing seven pounds and she's a little over a month old now i thought i would be posting a video sorry for all her little grunts and stuff throughout the video but anyway i thought i'd be posting a video way sooner but we've just been using this time to soak in all the newborn cuddles and honestly just adjusting to the new routine with her for today i thought it'd be fun to do a little catch-up q a i had you guys submit some questions on instagram to kind of just ask me how we've been and what we've been up to and how it's been having her so i'm going to be answering those today i guess little life update we did just move so i will be sharing more about that in the near future when we announce some of the um, things we've been up to but for now like I said I'm going to answer your questions and also I just wanted to say a special thank you to mom cozy for sponsoring today's video so let's go ahead and get into it I'm going to try to get to as many of your questions as possible as much as she allows me before I have to stop so let's just go ahead and jump right into it the very first question I got was how did we come up with the name Eloise and what does it mean? She has no middle name. I did get that question as well. I don't have a middle name. Alaya didn't have a middle name. Grayson does have a middle name. But honestly, coming up with a name is hard enough as it is to like come up with two names is just too much. Before any Bridgerton fans say anything, we had this name picked out and we actually liked it enough um, when we were expecting Alaya that this was our second choice. Um, but we ended up going with Alaya. So this was just another name that we really liked and we knew of way before Bridgerton Eloise popped up. <laughs> just throwing that out there. The meaning behind it I think just means healthy. There's not like a deep meaning to it. I didn't really try to go for a me for a meaning this time around. Because Eliza's name does have a significant meaning, but we just really like the name, so we went ahead and went with that one. We really like E names and short names. How was labor? I plan to do a whole birth story video here in the near future, but I did get induced, and it went so fast that my doctor didn't even make it into the room. I will share that for a whole nother story time here in the near future, but it went super great, really smooth, and we're really thankful with the experience, so stay tuned for that. How was postpartum this time around? So postpartum this time around was obviously really different because we had a newborn to take care of this time around in the physical aspect. I actually think it was a lot easier than my first time around. I don't know if it's because it was the second time my body was going through it, but I didn't bleed as much or as long as I did the first time around. I was definitely not as sore as I was the first time around. So physically I just felt like myself a lot sooner. The only difference this time around was like I had someone to take care of so emotionally I feel like it wasn't as taxing as the first time around like it's definitely been a different kind of emotional just getting used to you know letting go of my needs to take care of her but it's so much different than spending a postpartum season like grieving the loss of your newborn I'd say it's been easier in so many ways but also challenging in other ways because this time around like we are a lot more sleep deprived and yeah just adjusting to something different so what have you found the hardest so what i've found the hardest this time around um i think would have to be just how much i'm sitting around because i'm breastfeeding and taking care of someone i can't really be go 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 like i was the first time around and so i've found that a little challenging many times i feel like i'm just really unproductive and like I can't get anything done so I feel like that's been the hardest to kind of just adjust to that new routine and that new normal and it's not like what I'm doing right now isn't productive like nursing and taking care of a baby is a lot but it is just different so I feel like that's definitely been the hardest to adjust to and then with that what is my favorite thing about motherhood um that's really hard <laughs> I think I spent so much time after Aliyah passed away and even before she was born just imagining what I thought motherhood would look like and it's in so many ways the way I pictured and in so many other ways like not at all what I imagined it to be. I think my favorite thing is honestly just like making cute little faces to each other, having her smile up to me, knowing that I'm needed. The hardest thing 
is like having to pause on my stuff to take care of her but at the same time that's one of my favorite things because I spent two years like empty-handed just desiring that so much so it's just really sweet to finally be in that season how is breastfeeding going so it's been going great honestly um, we never had any issues with latching or any issues with my supply so I'm really thankful for that it is obviously just a learning curve because I've never done it and she's never done it so we just have to practice different positions and just getting into a routine of doing it. But honestly, it's been, for the most part, fairly smooth. I think it was just a matter of finding positions that would still allow me to like have free hands to do other things. It's just been an adjustment, like I said, but one of the things I have been enjoying is the Mom Cozy Pump. It is a wireless electric pump, which is so different from my first pregnancy because when I was gathering milk to donate for after I gave birth to Aliyah, I was using an electric pump and I was stuck to a wall the whole day. And that was just a lot because on top of grieving and like having to pump without a baby to feed, being stuck to a wall and not being able to move around, it was honestly just like mental torture. I'm really thankful this time around, even just to like be able to do a little bit more whenever I do get the chance, is to have a pump that I do a pump that I don't have to plug in. So this is the Mom Cozy Pump. First of all, look at how cute this thing is. I love how easy it is to carry and it's honestly so small and so much easier, like I said, just to maneuver and take with you. So you just open it up and everything that you need is in here. These two are just, like I said, electrical pumps and it has different levels up to nine um, and it gives you the battery life and all that stuff so you just tuck it into your nursing bra and then you can just go about your day doing things instead of being plugged into something and this was so amazing i never got this the first time around it's a little nipple measuring tool and after doing this i realized that i was using the wrong size the first time around with my old pump so this was super helpful and then here's like the different nipple sizes that they have of course the charger so you just go ahead and charge it i will say i'm exclusively breastfeeding but i am trying to gather a stash of milk so that moving forward if we want to give her a bottle at some point we'll have some or just in case of an emergency so here's what it looks like and it's super easy to take apart um, this is the part that you don't wash and it's like basically the battery life but on here it's where it collects the milk and then you can dump it into storage bags honestly it is a little bigger than like some of the collection cups i have but again this is an actual breast pump but you just pop them in and then you let it pump and choose what level you want how long you want to do it for and it has different settings where it has like different suction types if you want to like kind of mimic like what nursing would look like i will have more information about them in the description if you guys want to check them out along with some of my other favorite breastfeeding and pumping friendly items let's get on to the next question how many kids do you want now and how far apart do you want them so even before we had Aliyah or louise grayson and i always said we wanted three or four kids i feel like that number has not changed already two kids in I think the only thing that has changed is how far apart I want them. So between Aliyah and Eloise, there's exactly two years and one month. And I always thought like a two year age gap would be like great and perfect. And I feel like between Aliyah and Eloise, that was a good age gap to kind of just give myself time to f get back to where I was physically and honestly just a better place emotionally after we lost Aliyah. But I think moving forward with Eloise, I think I'd like maybe like a two and a half year to a three year age gap, I think because it's just been different um, to navigate making more me time now that I'm taking care of her. So I definitely wanna feel like I'm more established in that before we have another baby. I know it's gonna be an adjustment either way, but yeah, so I'm thinking like two and a half to three years and then still three to four kids. What has it been like mothering after loss and, sorry, mothering after loss and any anxiety? So there's definitely been a lot of anxiety um, I think regardless of whether you've experienced loss or not like anxiety is just something that you experience as a new parent I think as far as anxiety goes during the first few weeks that she was born we had people stay with us just because we were just so scared to sleep or to leave her alone or do anything during the first few weeks we didn't sleep a whole bunch. Um, there had to be someone like constantly watching her while she slept, while she was awake. Someone had to constantly be holding her just to make sure she was breathing like for our peace of mind. We just couldn't, just couldn't do it. And then 
I think with time it's gotten better. We've adjusted more and we've just gotten a little more peace about everything and I think also just getting to know her and her mannerisms and her like way of doing things kind of brings us a little bit more peace of mind. But I think even now like if she like coughs in the slightest or she sounds the slightest bit stuffy or like she grunts a certain way or something like we obviously get paranoid because like we're all new to this and we just don't know like what could be happening or if it could be something more serious but I will say overall despite all of that I think the anxiety is not as bad as I thought it was going to be and as far as mothering after loss I didn't think it was going to be I thought I was going to be crying a lot more I thought I was going to be really taken aback and focused on my grief that I wouldn't be able to enjoy my time with her and I feel like there's definitely been moments where like my grief has overtaken certain moments with her but overall I feel like I've been able to enjoy Eloise for Eloise and just experience joy and enjoy those moments and then equally also just grieve Aliyah and have moments of grief. I feel like I've found a good balance to welcome and allow both. I think I obviously get sad that sometimes like the first time I'm getting to actually experience these things like I don't know them outside the lens of loss but at the same time I think there is a level of appreciation that comes with that because I feel like I appreciate every moment all the more even though it is hard. I might have to do like a whole video with like questions geared specifically towards that but that's kind of the gist of it. The last question I'm gonna get to just because she's getting ready for a nap um, is do you plan to share more of her on social media and why do I notice other people hiding her face? Um, I have shared pictures of her on Instagram, on posts and in stories and then obviously this video. I want to share of her just because I love her and I'm excited to share this experience with you guys and so many of you have been following my journey that I just feel like you're all family that like you know you want to like share in this experience as well but I am also trying to find a balance of like how much of her to share because at the end of the day it is social media and social media is not always like the safest or wisest place to be sharing a bunch of information so I'm trying to find that balance and navigate how much of her to share and when to share and all that stuff which is very different with Aliyah because I feel like because she passed away there's just a level of protection that I don't have to deal with that's just like the added reality of it because she's not here so I feel like I can more so openly share those photos um, because I want people to know of her and to remember her and all these things but there's not so much protection if that makes sense whereas like she's here and like moving forward I have to think about like her growing up and all that stuff so if you guys have any experience with that let me know in the comments below like what your thoughts are on that and like how you navigate that um, and then as far as like other people hiding her face, um, it's not something I've actually asked people to do, but I think people just do it out of respect because it's not their kid. I don't hide her face when I do post her and people have asked me like, Hey, can I post this over? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Go for it. So I think it's just like, again, finding that balance, but I think mostly people just do it out of respect because it's like not their kid, <laughs> um, which I appreciate, but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Um, the only other thing I will say is, I think I said this at the beginning of the video, video I can't even remember, um, is we moved and we have a lot of fun projects in store that we plan to share here on our channel with Grayson making more appearances and all that stuff. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all your thoughts and prayers as we waited for her to be born. Um, I can't wait to share more of motherhood and of life and just this journey um whatever that looks like so thank you guys so much for watching make sure to give this video a thumbs up again thank you so much for mom cozy for sponsoring this video and i will see you guys in my next video bye